My name is Adam Winrich, 32-time Guinness World Record holder for whip cracking, and this video is about traditional buckskin Florida cow whips. These days, most of the cow whips you see are made from nylon, and that's because nylon does not rot. But the traditional material for the Florida cow whip is hand-tanned buckskin. And before kangaroo leather started being exported around the world, buckskin was about the strongest leather you could find. So first, I'm going to lay each one of these whips out and do some close-up shots so you can see more of the detail. I'll talk a little bit about how each one is made. Then we'll turn the camera up again so I can crack each one of them for you because uh, it's interesting to see how they roll out. This is the shortest one I have is seven and a half feet, but the longest one here is 14 and a half feet. Well, here, I'll give you a little bit of a close-up on these cow whips. I hope you enjoy the video. The first whip I'm going to show you here is a seven and a half foot Florida cow whip made by Cameron Cato. I'll show you whips that I have from two other makers, David Morgan and Curly Deckel. So of the three makers, Cameron Cato is the youngest, also the only one still living. So a couple interesting things about Cameron's whip. First, it is made from buckskin that he tanned himself, and he also turned the handle himself. Just tanning the buckskin alone is a very laborious process, but there are sort of cowboys down in Florida who really like to have at least one of the traditional cow whips in their collections, so they become sought after, at least down in Florida. So uh, some interesting things about it, I would say it's, it's 12 strands and it's seven and a half foot long. It weighs 13 ounces. And you'll notice that it does end with a tapered twist on the end. So it comes down to a four strand braid and then does a four strand twist, drops out a strand, then a three strand twist, drops out another strand, just leaving that tail hang out. If you're used to making nylon whips like I am, you still do this sort of twist at the end, but you can fuse the strand uh, that you have dropping right there. So you know it won't pull back out. Uh, but the leather also seems to stay in place, even though he's just leaving a little tail of it hanging out. And he comes all the way down to a two strand twist, ties a little knot in it. And then he's tied on a piece of paracord as sort of a short fall and then tied on an extra nylon cracker on the end of that. I've also seen whips from Florida where they just tie on a piece of paracord like this and that's all they use for the cracker. So this one's seven and a half foot long and I got one more from Cameron I'm gonna show you. This one here is also by Cameron Cato. This is 11 and a half feet long and 16 plat. That makes it a little bit fancier than the 12 plat one. Uh, one difference between this whip and the previous one is that instead of using hand tanned buckskin to tie the thong into the handle, Cameron has just used a piece of paracord, uh, which probably would last longer than the buckskin. And you can see again, he's tied on a piece of paracord on the tail and then a nylon cracker. So very nice whip, uh, very smooth braiding and definitely, uh, even though it's brand new, it looks old just because of the way he tanned the buckskin. Here's one of two cow whips that I have made by a Florida legend, man by the name of Curly Deckel. Curly has burned his name into the handle. I remember reading about Curly online years and years ago, and one of the techniques that he used that I thought was pretty interesting is on the inside of his whip, there is a lot of lead. He's also got some lead, mm, see, not in the butt of this one, but there's some lead poured into the butt of the next one I'm gonna show you. And his whips are actually really heavy. So this one's 10 foot long, and it weighs uh, one pound, one ounce. So that's a, feels fairly heavy. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of uh, weight to the whip, but that's because um, all the weight is in the lead that's on the inside of the whip. And as I understand it, he would lead load his whips by pouring lead shot onto a strip of duct tape and then rolling it up. And that is how he added the lead shot to the inside of his whips. And I don't know uh, what else runs on the inside of this whip other than the lead shot. I would think there must be something else, maybe... He had a sort of strip of leather going over the lead shot. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, one interesting thing about Curly Deckel's whips is he braided his whips from the point. So he actually starts with two relatively long buckskin strands, doubles them over and starts braiding. So we've got a little bitty loop here that the cracker goes through. And then he braids. And then as he's braiding, he just adds sort of one strand at a time, splicing them in until he ends in a 12-strand braid. And then once he gets up to here, he sort of 
It's hard to tell what he actually did. He might have like bind, bound off or tied up the strands there, and then he covered them with a little strip of buckskin, laced it up, and that's what keeps the end of the whip together. And one problem you can find with buckskin cow whips or leather cow whips is that where they rub into the end of the handle, that can wear out. So this little covering of buckskin kind of acts as wear leather so it doesn't wear out the braided part of the whip and stops it from becoming unraveled. And this whip and the next one I'm gonna show you made by Curly Deckel were owned by a, another legendary man in the Western arts, Monty Montana. Not too many people have heard about Monty Montana, but he's been in uh, several movies and he's perhaps uh, one of the most famous rodeo stars of the 1900s. Here's my second whip by Curly Deckel. This is definitely the heaviest Florida cow whip that I have. This is the one that has exposed lead in the butt end of the handle. You can see it right there. Don't lick that part. And I know this one also has a lot of lead in it. Let's see, this one is 13 and a half feet long and it weighs one pound, nine ounces. And you can see this one has a slightly different end that may have been put on by Curly or maybe it was put on by Monty Montana. It's still braided from the point like the other one I showed you with the strands added in as he goes and then sewn together with a little buckskin covering here at the handle end. Uh, but this one has a piece of paracord plus a little, I think it's like nylon or cotton string cracker that tapers down. Uh, so again, 13 and a half feet long, interesting whip. And it's fun for me to be able to own a whip by two legendary figures in the Western arts. Here is the longest and perhaps most rare leather cow whip that I have. It's not made from buckskin, it's made from kangaroo leather. And this cow whip was made by David Morgan, the same guy who made the whips for the first three Indiana Jones movies. And this whip actually shares some similar features and sort of in color and patina to some of the whips that were used in the movies. Here's a couple interesting things about this whip. Um, first, this handle, I think it's a very pretty handle, very attractive contouring. And you should notice that it is also lead loaded in the butt. However, this lead loading is safely covered by a plug of wood that's been glued in there. So that's very important. Something else interesting about this handle that you don't see in the other whips is that David has added a piece of wear leather. You don't see that in the other whips. So with the start of the whip, it looks like he sort of Started out with a wide strip of leather, cut his strands, and then maybe folded this over inside the whip and started braiding. So to make sure that this end of the whip doesn't wear out, because if it does wear out, it'd be difficult to fix, David has added this piece of wear leather to go between the braided whip part and the handle because uh, this wear leather here is much easier to replace than trying to sort of rebind off this part of the whip if it does break through. So you'll see that in a lot of cow whips. Uh, you'll see it in cow whips made by Chris King, who's made tens of thousands of whips. He's still making them today. And see what else about this whip. It's interesting that it is like the thickest whip of any of the whips you've seen here. It's almost as thick as one of David Morgan's bull whips. And uh, also he does end in a two strand twist just like the other traditional cow whips you've seen made by Cameron Cato. Uh, the interesting thing here, he's put on one of his typical nylon crackers. However, he's looped the cracker through the strands on the end. He didn't tie them around the strands. So I'd be hesitant to crack this whip super hard because I think that nylon would eventually cut through the kangaroo leather. It'd be better to tie this around everything and have it kind of sticking out that way. It's still a very cool whip, a uh, very rare whip to have. Uh, I used to have two of these. I bought both of them at the Cowboy Christmas in Las Vegas uh, probably over a decade ago. And then I took them to Will Morgan's house. Uh, that's David's son. And he really wanted to have one for David's whip collection. So I sold him one, but I still have this one. And it's 14 and a half feet long and it weighs a whopping one pound, nine ounces. Well, that's enough yakking. Let's crack all of these whips. I'll start out with the seven and a half hood whip by Cameron Cato. This is the whip that I've already been cracking in the video. And probably of all these whips, this one would feel the most similar or the most comfortable to sport whip crackers who are used to modern nylon whips. And uh, I would say the main crack that's usually used for working cattle is the overhand flick like that. So that's why 
the little bit of rotation you have in the handle kind of helps with that continuous motion. And this one's a little bit short to really maximize that crack, uh, but it does mean that it's much better for all of the other cracks you might want to do. Now let's go a little bit longer. Here is a, an 11 and a half foot buckskin cow whip by Cameron Cato. Still, I would say comparing even this longer whip, this one that's 11 and a half feet to the other whips I'm still holding, this one is tapered more how a sort of modern sport whip or modern nylon sport whip would be tapered. So it still rolls out pretty good and you can do a few multiple cracks with it. A little bit harder because it's longer, but it, it rolls out nice. But because of the lighter weight, it doesn't quite have the punch for that overhand flick. And now moving on to the 10 footer by Curly Deckel where he's poured a bunch of lead shot that runs more than half the length of the whip. And throwing it out, it's almost like throwing sort of a heavy piece of rope. Now I'm not gonna crack this one super hard because it is kind of old. And also Curly's whips don't look like they're made from hand tanned buckskin like what Cameron Cato made. Uh, these look like they're made from modern chrome tan buckskin, uh, which is still strong, but not quite as strong as traditionally tanned buckskin. So I've seen video online of Curly. He would basically just throw his whip out like that. It's also good for an underhand flick. And that's where these whips really shine, where it's really heavy and not much taper. They really shine for doing cracks like the flick. but they're not great for other multiple cracking. I think that's enough with that one. And I'm not even sure if that is Curly's original cracker or if that's something that Monty Montana would have put onto it. Um, if I were using it a lot, I'd probably put a sort of short paracord fall on it and then tie on a cracker that had a little bit more of a buffer between the cracking end of the whip and that delicate little buckskin loop at the end. So this one is 13 and a half feet. All right, let me check my cheater notes again. How long is it? Two, yeah, 13 and a half feet, one pound, nine ounces. You can really feel the lead loading in this one. Do a quick overhead crack with it. That's pretty satisfying. And now we'll end with the David Morgan cow whip. This is actually the stiffest one of the bunch. And compared to Curly's whips, David doesn't have near as much weight in this whip. Just like Cameron Cato's whips are tapered more, sort of like a modern sport whip. I would say David did something similar where this has a taper much like uh, his bull whip. So the weight isn't carried down that far. Uh, it rolls out pretty nice. Again, at 14 and a half feet, it's not great for a lot of multiple cracking. But I'll try some anyway. Ah. Uh, it's not working too great for me there. But I obviously do not practice with this whip. And definitely while I'm throwing it around, I can really feel the thong. Uh, swiveling on the end of the handle. Again, because it's always moving and swiveling, that helps it with the crack that you're often using it for, which is the overhand flick for moving cattle. But uh, if I wasn't clear earlier, it's because of that rotating motion that this part of the whip can wear on the handle and actually wear through. So that's why the wear leather is on there. So that sort of takes the uh, sort of abuse or um, that can happen on the braided part of the whip away so you got a little replaceable part and once that wears through you just untie this put another one on and tie it back onto the handle well that's cracking a few traditional buckskin florida cow whips and one
Cow Whip. That was made by David Morgan. My name is Adam Winrich. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to be so cool and support my channel, you can do that by donating as little as a dollar a month into my Patreon. I appreciate every new patron that I get. And I'm going to crack this really short, fast Cow Whip by Cameron Cato one more time. Thanks for watching.